Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making this rather attractive medieval old style well. It's one of those classic game objects that you often see. This is a beginner's tutorial but I'm expecting some understanding of the interface and hopefully you've had a look at my beginner's course and this is a general continuation of that course. You can find out more about that on gabbit.co.uk where all the courses are free and you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels. It is worth noting that this is not optimized for games, but you could use this in games if you wanted to. Throughout this course, I'll be going through different modeling techniques and I might be doing things slightly differently to how I might work just for the sake of teaching and going through each technique stage by stage and not introducing too many things too early. So let's begin. I'll start with a new scene. And when you load up Blender, you should see something similar to this. I'll start by creating the circular stones around the base of the well. I'm going to use the default cube this time. If we press tab to go into edit mode, or we can press on edit mode up here, and I want to be in edges, which is along here, or I can press two on my keyboard. So I've got all the edges selected at the moment. And if I press control B, I will bevel them. And I just move my mouse, which can be a bit glitchy, but if you move your mouse, you should start to see it move as well. And we're trying to create a sort of stone looking object like this. It's got that nice stylized look when it's beveled and that just takes the sharpness off the edges. Let's go into front view now with one on my numpad or you can use the axis up here. And I want to duplicate this and I'm actually going to duplicate it in edit mode. So I'm still in edit mode, shift D to duplicate. And then I've got a duplicate. What I've forgotten to do though is change this to face mode. So I'll undo that. It's also worth noting that my shortcut keys will be displayed down here. So this time let's go to face mode with three or I can click up here and make sure you've selected all with A. Double tapping A will deselect all, A select all and shift D to duplicate this time. And let's constrain it to the X axis by pressing X. Somewhere around there looks good. I'm going to go to wireframe now. I can go up here or I can press Z on my keyboard and go to wireframe and I'm going to box select those end faces. So that's just left clicking and dragging. Now I can press G then X and grab and slide them out. So there's two blender units here and three on this one. I'm also going to control R and loop cut down the middle here. So control R, click once and you can move it around or you can just right click to cancel that movement to leave it in the middle. You can also use the loop cut tool over here. So I've got two bricks and one is one and a half times the other. I want to create one more different type of brick. So let's go to front view again. Oh, that's interesting, I've got the reverse view. If you ever want to reverse your view, press control one or control three and it gives you the other side. This would normally be front view and I was on the other side. So control and the number on your numpad. So I'll press control one to go to front view again so it looks the same. It doesn't matter which direction you're going in. Now I've got two objects but they are still one object. What I mean by that, if I press L on this object for linked, it selects everything that's linked to that, but it's not completely joined to this one. So the vertices aren't merged together. Even if they were overlapped like this, I can press, I can double tap A to deselect all and press L over this one and it still only selects this linked object. So you can select separate objects in edit mode, even though they are part of the same object. I'll just quickly undo that. And let's duplicate this one, Shift D and drag it along the X. So Shift D, X and drag it to about there. Box select those end faces. I've only got edges at the moment. It should work with edges as well, but I'd rather use faces. Grab and pull that along and constrain it to the X axis. So now it's twice the size of the original. I want one more loop cut down here. And I'm going to even these loop cuts out. Alt left click on that and double G to slide it across. Now you can see that's fairly even now. The reason I want these loop cuts in here is so when I bend them round, they'll have more topology to bend with. I'll explain that a bit more later. Let's go to front view again. This time I'll go the other way. Select them all, Shift D to duplicate, X to constrain to the X axis and pull them across. And I'll do them all together once more, Shift D, X to there. So we've got our long line. Now we need to add a modifier to all this in order to bend it round into a circle. Now it's worth pointing out that my pivot point is in the middle there, and that's a fine place for the pivot point to be, but it's important that we think about where it is. So let's go to object mode with tab. I'm going to go to solid mode so I can see it better. And I want to go to the modifiers over here where the spanner or the wrench is. Add modifier, and this is a simple deform. 
So a new one, simple deform, and you can see that it creates this twist because it's on the twist selection. If I change this to bend now, you can see it bends a bit strangely because it's going on the X axis, which is this red one down here. I want it to bend around the Z axis, which is up and down, which you can see up here as well. So let's change the axis to Z. And you can see it's starting to go in the direction we want it to go. Also notice that it's going around this pivot point here. So let's change the angle. If I click and drag, I can slide it up, but I know it's going to be 360 degrees. So I can type that in and it goes all the way around to the beginning and you can see it just joining up there. And that's great. And also, if I go into edit mode, you can see that these loop cuts we made are helping it to bend around into a circle. If I didn't make those loop cuts, these blocks would all be straight and it wouldn't work so well. Back to object mode tab, and I'm going to apply the modifier. You could make a copy of it if you ever wanted to go back and change this, but I know I'm not going to. But it's worth noting when you press apply, you are setting that modifier and you can't go back and try and change things with it. So I'll press apply. Let's go to front view now and let's duplicate this shift D and bring it up in the Z axis. Then I'll scale it down to somewhere around there. And now we can see one of our problems because my pivot point is here. It's scaling around that pivot point. If I press S, it scales around that pivot point. I'll cancel that with right click. So actually I want the pivot point to be right in the center. And there's an easy way to do that. I'm going to undo those steps. So I'm back to where I started and I'm going to go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. And can you see it jump into the middle there? If I press N on my keyboard now and go to item, you can also see that the location is slightly away from the center. I think it would be helpful to have it right in the center. So I'm going to change all these to zero. You can click and drag across all of them and type in zero and it will move it back into position. Now let's go to front view, shift D to duplicate, Z on the keyboard to constrain it to the Z axis, somewhere around there, scale it down with S, and then I can grab in the Z axis again, move it into position, but it's in line with my other one. So I want to rotate around the Z axis, R then Z, and then I can have more of a brick type look. Let's just look around quickly because you don't really have these lining up with each other. I'll rotate around the Z axis again a bit more. There we go. That's a bit better. One into front view, shift D to duplicate in the Z axis. So Z on the keyboard, move that up and rotate it around the Z axis. And just having a look around to see whether it's lining up. We don't want any of them lining up like that. So I'll keep rotating it until they're not lining up. There we go. And then I'll duplicate the bottom one. So I'll go to front view again with one on my numpad, shift D to duplicate and move that up in the Z axis and just rotate that slightly in the Z, checking that it doesn't overlap anywhere. That's great. Oh, and I forgot to make that one bigger. So to front view again, scale and just scale it up slightly. So it's not quite as big as the bottom one, somewhere around there, grabbing the Z axis. And there is the base of my well. Now I'm overlapping my light and camera. I'm going to quickly select both the light and the camera and press M that moves them to a new collection and I can create a new collection here. I'm going to call that camera and light and press okay. Then I can easily hide them up here in my outliner so I can hide them from my view. They are still there and having an influence, so they will be rendered, but this just hides it from the viewport. So at the moment I've got four objects in my collection. I'm actually going to make a new collection out of these as well. So select all of them, press M new collection and call it well. Now the next thing I want to do is make these non uniform. So at the moment they're very rigid and it doesn't really have any character. Now there's a couple of ways I can do that. I could actually join them all together and go into sculpt mode and start moving the vertices around a bit. And I quite like doing that, but I think a better way for beginners is to understand proportional editing. So with all of them selected, I can go into edit mode with tab and the new version of Blender means that I can edit multiple objects at the same time, as long as I have, which is ticked by default, lock object modes. So let's go into vertex mode. And if I select one vertices, let's say, turn on my proportional editing at the top here. That means when I press G now, it's got this circle of influence. So if I make that really big for the moment, you can see the sorts of things it does. So anything connected to this object is being influenced 
by my movement. I'll cancel that with right click and I'll press G to grab and if I use my wheel now I can change the influence. So let's move certain vertices around and just start pulling things in and out in different directions and give it some variation. Remember to use your keyboard shortcuts for this, so G to grab. I'm just left clicking and pressing G to grab and moving them around. O is the shortcut to turn on and off proportional editing, so the shortcut is O. And you might just want to move one vertices here and there as well. Also what might help you is to changing your view to a matcap view. And then you can really see what the shape is going to look like. And you might want to go back into object mode and just have a look around and see whether you're happy with it. So the matcap mode, if that was a bit quick, is up here under the down arrow and you've got matcaps there. Lots of different ones to choose from and some will help you see your shading a little better. So there we go, I've gone back into object mode and clicked away from my object so I can see it all. And I think that's looking fine. So your first task is to get to this point. Once you've got to that point, I'm going to show you how I made the wooden frame. And you can kind of do that for homework. And then I'll go through the roof tiles and other bits and pieces in the next episode. But if I press shift and right click, that will change my 3D cursor to this point. And I can add the supports. So shift A, mesh cube. Let's go to side view with three and move that into position and then front view. Actually, I moved it into the wrong position. So front view, off to the side there, side view, into the middle. That makes more sense. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out here. If I scale it now, so scale in the Z axis, and make a supporting beam a bit further with the Z axis and scale it in. So if I press S, then shift Z, it will only scale in the X and Y axis. And let's move that up. Now can you see my scale is non-uniform, it's not all one. So when I go into edit mode and I go to the edges, or I can press two on my keyboard and press control B, the bevel looks all strange. And that's because it doesn't understand the scale of the object. Let's undo that. A better way is to just scale in edit mode, or if you've already scaled in object mode, let's go quickly back to object mode with tab, I can press control A and I can set my scale or apply my scale. So when I press this, look what happens over here in the scale. So Control A, scale, it all returns to one. Now when I go to edit mode, press Control B with my edges selected, I can see that they're all working in a uniform manner. The other thing that's worth pointing out, when I do the bevel for the wood, I don't bevel nearly as much as I did with the stone. You could in fact keep your wood with sharp edges. I just prefer a bit of a bevel. I think it gives it a better look. But if you do bevel the wood, then you only need a slight amount. So your homework task therefore is to try and recreate what I've done with the frame of my well, which you should be able to see in the corner here. And here's just the base on its own to help you out. So very straightforward. I'll quickly select it and go into edit mode so you can see So a slight bevel and a few loop cuts, and I've just distorted them slightly. The quick way to distort, if you alt left click on a loop cut and press R to rotate, you can see that I'm just giving it slight variations around the place. And you might want to scale some in and scale some out. Okay, so that should be enough for you to be getting on with until the next time. And in the next episode, we'll be covering the roof tiles and the base and adding textures and materials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.